Good evening and welcome to On the Record Decision 2017, a debate-style television talk show where Bahamians will find the balance through an open debate they've been looking for. Election is now a mere six days away. Candidates are playing the waiting game. We have been with you on this sometimes tumultuous road to the general elections, and we intend to continue the course. Tonight, we bring you a very special guest in the person of former Prime Minister, the Right Honorable Hubert Ingram. Mr. Ingram, once the leader of the Free National Movement, was Prime Minister of the Bahamas from August 1992 to May 2002, and then again from May 2007 to May 2012. Prior to the FNM's defeat in 2012, Mr. Ingram was the Member of Parliament for the Free National Movement for the North Abaco constituency. He served as Leader of the Opposition in the House of Assembly from 2005 to 2007. In the historic election of August 1992, in which the FNM unseated the Progressive Liberal Party, Mr. Ingram succeeded Prime Minister Salindon Pinley, who had been Prime Minister of the Bahamas for some 25 years. After the Free National Movement was defeated in 2012, Mr. Ingram announced his resignation as FNM leader and as the MP for North Abaco. He subsequently went into retirement. Tonight, we discuss the state of political affairs in the Bahamas and look forward to a very good and healthy discussion with Mr. Ingram. It's all on the record. I'm your host, Jerome Sawyer. On the Record is brought to you by Alive, the nation's newest and best LTE network. Good to be alive. This is us. We all live here. And while we don't think of ourselves as numbers, in the grand scheme of things, numbers are part of who we are. Like your phone number, for instance. That's why at Alive, we believe you should keep your number when you switch. Go in store today and ask an Alive Switch Angel. They'll make it real simple for you. We are Alive. If I remember correctly, I think the thing that got me involved with politics was I think the government had did something wrong on a particular day and I was extremely frustrated and I thought it would be good to assist in helping change the country. Voting against something is powerless. Fighting for something, that's really where the power is. A vote for the DNA means hope, change, ownership, power, destiny. 175 candidates vie for 39 seats in the May 10th general elections. More than 181,000 registered voters are expected at the polls that day. Who will form the next government of the Bahamas? To find out, join me, Jerome Sawyer, along with a team of seasoned anchors and reporters, analysts and experts, as we bring you live coverage of Our Choice 2017. Coverage begins election night at 6 p.m. on RTV Cable Channel 212. Welcome to On the Record. With days to go before the election, former Prime Minister Hubert Ingram is back in the headlines, leading, lending his support, that is, to the Free National Movement's election campaign and attacking the Progressive Liberal Party's agenda. Mr. Ingram, welcome to On the Record. We're happy to have you in studio with us tonight on the show. Thank you very much, John. I'm here because I made a promise you I would come, and you have cashed in on that promise. Well, thank you very much. I'm happy you kept that promise. <laughs> Sir, before we really get into the, the topic tonight, which we're looking at sort of the state of political affairs in the country, I want to catch up with you a little bit. Uh, really, what have you been doing since your departure from politics? Uh, well, I have a little law office, um, and uh, I have a little boat. I do a little fishing, and uh, that's what I do. Okay. <laughs> Is this how you would have envisioned the end of your political career? I would have expected, you no, know, well, yes and no. I expected to spend more time in Abaco. I have a house in Abaco. 
spend lots of money in that house. My wife doesn't like to fly. And so we normally go down by this boat that goes in the Sandy Point. And, um, they change the schedule so it goes late at night and whatnot. So that has not worked out well for me. I have to get her more accustomed to flying. Um, so that's the only thing I regret. Not spend as much time in a place I spent my money on, uh, intended to spend time in. Mm -hmm. I'm not spending much time in. Okay. I want to mm -hmm. begin to, to talk about uh, a little bit about the 2012 election, your views on what do you think would have led to the FNM's defeat in 2012. Um, there were lots of, of reasons put out there in the public, but your own personal views on what you think happened in that election? Um, I really don't know. I was surprised by the result. Um, I gather that the public was very angry with, with ourselves, angry with me. Um, Vex about the roadworks that were going on. <clears throat> Many persons didn't like the idea of us selling BTC. Um, they felt that um, they told me not to do this, and I did it anyhow, um, because people seem to have a view that once they tell you something, um, you are to rubber stamp it, and if you don't, you are stubborn. Um, and of course, I took the view that, you know, um, they liked me because I thought. They thought I knew at the end of the day what was best, and I would take responsibility for it. For instance, this place here now where you work, cable, I caught a lot of hell for this coming to this country. Um, lots of people didn't want it to happen. But I think now it's a wonderful thing. It's now important. It's based to have a second cell um, operation. It has a television channel. It produces good, balanced news, etc. And I think many of those who opposed me doing it may now secretly say it was not a bad idea. I want to talk about some of the things, though, that, 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 that people would have been angry about. For instance, the, the Providence um, uh, Roadworks Improvement, the sale of BTC. Those two things, I think, stuck out mm -hmm. um, going into that election. Looking back, um, do, you still, do you still stand by your decisions in, 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 in regards to those particular items? Well, I'm very proud of my decisions. I, I'm, in the case of BTC, um, Cape and the Wireless has not lived up my expectation in terms of the level of service they provided. They, and they, 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 but beyond that, yes, I wanted to privatize and liberalize telecommunications in the Bahamas. <clears throat> when I came to office in 1992, you couldn't go into a shop and buy a telephone from anybody. They couldn't sell them. The only place you could buy a telephone was at a telco. The telco had to repair your phones when they went down. The telco was the licensor. Anybody who wanted to have a little radio on their boat, um, there was a one, one shop town. <clears throat> and now I've got so many of you who are employed in the communication sector because of my policy, my government's policy, to liberalize it, to get the government out of the business of being the regulator and the provider of telecommunication services in the country, and to get the government out of the business of being the owner of it. Um, but Telco made more profits um, in the period of time while we were preparing it for sale, downsizing it, that it made in its entire history. Its entire history. Um, and so yes, I'm very, very proud of that. I'm very proud of what I did with the roadworks in Nassau. Um, and frankly, I think that if I didn't do it, um, there are few who I think would have taken the heat in doing it. There are still some parts of it that are incomplete. Um, I hope the government in the future will, will finish the work. We planned that work for the road from my first came to office in 1992. We got a grant from the, from the Japanese um, fund. Um, we hired a Canadian company to do the planning of it. We started the road works um, before I left office in 2002. We issued a contract. The contractor went bankrupt. <clears throat> we had provided for the contractor to be insured, so if he didn't complete the job, the insurance company had the duty to do so. The PLP got elected, 
Um, and they chose not to pursue that. Um, and uh, when I came back in 2007, I met the same Lord works there to be done. What? And, in it your cost, it, and it cost the Bahamas substantial monies. It cost the Bahamas four or five times as much money to do as it would have been cost if we hadn't gotten fired in 2002. If the contractor um, who went bankrupt, his insurance company was called upon to finish the job, um, it would have been probably 25 to 30 percent of the cost we ended up um, doing because the cost of oil had gone up and all sorts of things. What went wrong with the, with the, with the Roadworks project? People were just angry um, at the length of time, cost overruns. What really you think led to, to, to all of the angst that people had for this Roadworks? <clears throat> because people, generally speaking, believe life is about instant coffee. Everything has to be instant. I'm not prepared to wait for anything. Give it to me now, not tomorrow, etc. And uh, we couldn't deliver as quickly as that. Um, paid the price and uh, have no regrets. And I'm glad those who were angry are enjoying it today. So let's get now to, to post-2012. You would have, following the elections, would have um, stepped down as a leader of the uh, then opposition, Free National Movement, resigned your seat from Parliament. Hubert Minnis became leader. Um, was he, at that time, your choice to take over uh, the party? Yes. Why? Absolutely. Why did you think he was the best person at that time? Um, well, we had a limited number of persons elected in the House of Assembly. Mm -hmm. And he, amongst those who were elected, was an outstanding MP and fully qualified to lead the party. He also had the goodwill of the population of the Bahamas. And I think, generally speaking, the population of the Bahamas agreed that he was the right person to select to be the leader. I didn't determine that by myself. My colleagues also did. Um, they were unanimous in their decision for Minister to be the leader of the party. Some people felt that you sort of abandoned the party and abandoned the people. You left the house, left the party, went off into the sunset. People, people were angry by that. Why not stay and face the music? Whatever I do, there will be people who have a different point of view. If I stayed around, they'd say, oh, Ingram wants to control everything. He's a dictator. I go into the small corner they sent me, and I sit down, and I make no noise, and I'm not waiting for my name to be called either. When they called my name the other day to come and help them for the campaign, I came. Otherwise, no. The party has a new leader, and uh, I give him all the space he wants. He can call me, get his advice if he wants it. He can take it if he doesn't want to. Um, it's his show. The, the, the <laughs> Prime Minister's <laughs> criticized your return, saying, you know, that the minister's pathetic to have to call Hubert Ingram back to be on the campaign trail. Yeah, because he's a hypocrite in that respect. You know, he calls Pinland's name all the time. In fact, he leans on Pinland. Um, wouldn't let that man rest in his grave. Um, that's okay. Um, Pinland's wife, Lady Pinland, um, in 2002, 2007, 2012, oh, wrapped around, etc. Even the former Anglican Bishop, Bishop Gomez, all of them, etc. All retired people. It's okay for them, but not for me to come out. Okay. Well, I'm out um, because I, um, first of all, I'm out because I was asked to come out. <clears throat> I was happy to be asked to come out. <clears throat> I honestly believe that the Bahamas needs a change of government. There are many, many serious issues that I'm concerned about that will affect the Bahamas, uh, myself, my children, my grandchildren. And uh, um, it is my personal opinion that the PLP is now heading the country in the wrong direction, um, and that Mr. Christie ought to be replaced as the Prime Minister of the Bahamas, and that many of his ministers ought to also be replaced, that the public ought to have a good look at what has been done over the last five years, um, this has been a very secretive government. They've kept many things away from the public, and I think the public need to have um, a, a hearing, an airing of the things that happen, so that they can make some judgments. 
um, about the future and to prevent these things from happening in the future. So we are at the point of our first break. We're going to explore all of those things, definitely um, your views on the current government and their performance in the office. We, like I said, are at the point of that first break in the show. But before we go, we want you to be sure and tune in next week to our uh, On the Record episode on May 11th, where we will be discussing the aftermath of the general elections, who will be the big winners and losers from May 10th. On the Record, we will continue with our discussion with the former Prime Minister, the Right Honorable Hubert Ingram, on the political state of affairs in the Bahamas. We'll be right back right after this. My decision to depart from the Progressive Liberal Party was not an overnight decision. And I had to be honest with myself and ask myself, do I feel that I'm in a position where I can bring about the change that I need to bring about if I continue to align myself with this particular organization? And the obvious answer to that was no. And it became very clear to me that this was the direction that I should go in. What does a DNA vote mean? Progress? Prosperity, stronger economy. Get the HD Cinemax experience anywhere, anytime, and any way you want with the Cinemax Go app, free to all Rev TV subscribers. To start watching on your laptop, sign up at cablebahamas.com slash my account. Then visit cinemaxgoca.com. To watch Cinemax Go on your mobile device, just download the app from the Bahamas iOS App Store or Google Play Store. Launch the app, select Bahamas as your country, follow the prompts, choose Rev, and sign in with your Rev My Account credentials. Now, you can enjoy unlimited access to over 300 movies updated every month with Cinemax Go from Rev. Rev. Join the revolution. Join the revolution. Our economy shrinking, incomes decreasing, unemployment on the rise with one in nine Bahamians out of work, and our country's credit rating falling to junk bond status. Yet the PLP keeps handing out lucrative government contracts to friends, donors, even family members. A stagnant economy, crippling unemployment, credit downgrades, rampant corruption. They can't fix our problems when they keep ignoring them. Welcome back to On the Record. Election Day is almost here, and who better to discuss the state of politics and the elections than a man who led his party to three victories as leader of the Free National Movement, now former Prime Minister, the Right Honorable Hubert Ingram. Mr. Ingram, how would you rate Dr. Minnis's performance as leader of the FNM? Um, that's not my job. I'm not the waiting business. He's a leader of a party. And I support the party, and I support the leadership of the party. Do you think he's done and, a good job? Uh, um, I think the party is doing a good job, mm -hmm. and I think the party will win the next election, next week. At some point early on in his leadership, uh, Dr. Minister said the Ingram era is over. Um, do you think that was a wise statement on, on his behalf, and do you think that caused some issues for, for the party? Um, not for the party. It may have caused some issues for him in relation to some of my supporters, but it didn't cause me any difficulty. My era is over. Mm -hmm. I'm happy for the era I had, and uh, I wish he could have a era like mine, or better than mine. And the same thing for Christy and anybody else. <laughs> I have no regrets about my era. I, I'm very proud of what I did, and so thank but you very much. Do you think it, it, <laughs> set, it, it really <clears throat> set off some of your supporters in a bad way? Um, probably, yes, probably it did, um, but um, I don't think that was an issue that, that affected my personal relationship with Dr. Minnes, who's been my friend for a number of years and who continues to be my friend. Well, I, that was going to be my view. I, I still think, enjoy uh, that relationship. Yes, of course, of okay. course, of course. Well, because the, the questions that always arise about, you know, whether there, there's discourse between you and, and Dr. Minnes, and does he take your advice? No, we've got, be, no, we got to bear in mind that, you know, Dr. Minnes is the leader of the party. Mm -hmm. um, the party can't have two leaders at the same time. Cannot have two leaders at the but same time. But you know, time. there are people who believe that you're in the background calling the shots. 
Well, you know, if I um, said it's good morning, there'll be people who say, no, it's good night or bad night. <laughs> So I can't, I can't plant my corn by their rain. Understood. I can only tell you that that is not so, okay? Um, I've given the minister advice when they've asked. I've given Christy advice if asked. And uh, um, they can take it or leave it. Loretta Butler turned around for leader of the FNM um, two occasions shortly after the, the second time around. She would have um, uh, led a, a revolt within the House of Assembly um, became leader in the House. That movement has sort of fizzled out. Your views on that entire fiasco situation? Well, that was inappropriate. A political party determines its leaders, um, not the members of the House. The members of the House can constitutionally select a leader. But if you are a member of a party, um, you ought to be bound by what the party has decided. And the party decided that Minnis was its leader. The extent to which they had a difficulty in supporting Minnis, they ought to settle it in the party. If they couldn't settle it in the party, they could have taken their Georgie model and leave. But they had no right to remove Minnis as leader of the opposition. The FNM is the official opposition of the Bahamas, and the FNM chose Minnis as its leader, um, whether they like it or not. Um, and uh, so that was a wrong decision they made. Um, I had cautioned them against that before. I was away. Um, they tried this before. They had attempted this before. Mm -hmm. And uh, I gave them very strong advice not to do that. Um, and uh, met with all of them. And I was therefore surprised when I discovered that they had done so. And so. But you know, there are people who say you were behind it. You were advising I, I, the I, 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 I keep telling you. Yeah. Um, Ingram does anything bad. Do people tell you about any good things Ingram does? <laughs> <laughs> Don't all these things is advising this and doing that. Does he do anything good? <laughs> I, do, I doubt it. Do you, in essence, still think that this is the end of, of, of her political career? I mean, she's running as an independent in Long Island. And so she'll either win or, or lose next week. Right. Um, I'm focused on the F and M, the actions between the F and M and the PLP. Mm -hmm. Let's face it. At the end of the day, People are either going to be governed by the FNM or by the PLP. Anything else is truly a waste of time and your vote. Interestingly, you say that the, the DNA has been this third force that was around in last election, back in this election. Um, if, you want, if, you, if you want the PLP to be the government of the Bahamas, then you'll vote for the DNA. So did that happen in the last election? Did, of course. Did they, they contributed to, to the FNM's no loss. No question with that, but that's, yeah. that's fine. That's not a problem. But even then, going into that election, Mr. Ingram, you sort of didn't pay that much attention. And I didn't pay any attention to them. That was one of the mistakes I made in the election last time. Um, I didn't see them as a threat. Um, and uh, they turned out to be... Um, I hope the FNM is not making the same mistake this time. Um, all, the, all the DNA can do is get some disaffected um, FNM votes um, and help the PLP. They are the best insurance policy the PLP could have. The PLP love them dearly because any vote they get is a vote less for the FNM. Um, and so the public is advised most strongly by me. If you don't want the PLP in office, please vote for the FNM. There's no other way to get rid of the PLP other than to vote for the FNM. No other way. There was even talk <laughs> at one time of this, this coalition um, arrangement that, that Loretta Butler turned on her team um, and the DNA and, and some other sort of You're very folks. focused on Loretta Butler turner No, I, we are, I Yes, you are very focused. No, we, so we those are the, no, we got an hour. We got an hour. Let's talk yes, about the relevant things. Well, it's either F&M or think, PLP. Do no, you think Loretta there is, is a space Loretta for is a, Loretta is an individual who is running for the House of Assembly. The F&M is an organized party running in 40 seats, and so is the PLP. So you and, think and there's and no the end of the day, anyone else and, getting any of those Absolutely not. Those 39 will go what? between the FNM or the PLP. That is right. That's it. The DNA will get no seat nowhere. And no independence. Okay, sir. No independent either, okay. in my view. Um, let's shift gears now. <laughs> um, you have been very, very critical of, of the, the leadership of, of Mr. Christie. 
um, over your, your two appearances at, at the recent rallies. Um, in summation, I want to talk a little bit about Christie's leadership style in the past five years and really where he has taken the country. Um, you know, I would prefer to talk about what my differences are with the government party as opposed to individualizing it. But I think Christie's good for the PLP. I think he's bad for the Bahamas. Explain. I think, I think he has been a, an ineffective leader. I think he has been a promiser, not a deliverer. Um, and I think the population of the Bahamas um, believe that he has not leveled with them. He's not shot straight with them. And they are, they've lost confidence in him. And they don't trust him anymore. And they're going to vote against the PLP, largely because of Christie. Christie was also the person who many people voted for the PLP because of their trust in him. Um, they had great admiration for him. I think he's demonstrated to them that they should have a look at the other side. Do you think this would have been a different race if he were not leader and, say, an Alfred Sears had emerged as leader? I don't know that. Um, he, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, hypotheticals in politics are not good subjects to engage in. There has, uh, one of our, our more recent show, shows dealt with conflicts and corruption. Um, reports of <clears throat> conflicts and, and or corruption have been a dime a dozen, it seems, over the, it seems over the past few weeks. Um, I want to talk a little bit about some of the allegations against some specific cabinet ministers um, and how that is affecting, how oh, those allegations are affecting the race at this point. I don't know the extent to which the public of the Bahamas is incensed by allegations of conflict of interest or allegations of corruption. I don't know the extent to which that influences many votes. I think that people are influenced by by governance, by what affects them personally, etc. Um, it would be good if people became concerned about so you think they just don't, don't, don't care um, about the, the, the I, I wouldn't say they don't care, but, they, uh, but that is not what drives them, you know? I mean, um, um, take, um, take Jerome Fitzgerald, for instance. Um, in many societies, he'd be driven out of office. Driven out of office. Um, or so why are we so different? Well, we are different. We are different people. We are developing. We are moving along. And so um, it takes a while. And... Uh, I expect that next week um, you're going to see some, some, some things happen by the population of Bahamas. Fitzgerald, um, you started to mention um, Alison Maynard Gibson, Shane Gibson, um, in some, people eyes, some people's eyes yet again, um, prominent members in the Christie cabinet. But they were also elected by people. You've got to bear in mind that people elected them. The population elected people like them. And so you have to convince the population that they're the wrong choices to make. And that is what we are seeking to do. How should, he, how, should, how should he have, in your opinion, how should he have a discipline or should he have, have, have managed some kind of, of discipline against these cabinet ministers for this behavior? The PLP has a culture of begging investors for various things. It's a culture. Uh, when they are in office, people spring up who go around hitting up on others. That's known. That's a reality. That's a fact. I don't know the extent to which Christie um, can change that. I think that um, unlike what has happened in the past, I think that, that, that um, stronger efforts have to be taken and made towards ridden our country or this kind of thing. How did a, a Hubert Ingram seemingly deal with, with, with instances of, of cabinet ministers doing inappropriate things or, or going against the well, code it's, of it's, conduct? It's, 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 I mean, it's, it's very clear, clear as day. Um, the PLP will tell you, say, oh, Brent Simonet had to resign because of conflict of interest. You know, if he had a conflict of interest, he resigned, eh? That was the F and M. Who resigns on the PLP? And Brent's case, he got better value for the contract he gave um, than would have happened if he had given it to somebody else. Um, the only issue was he shouldn't have given it to his own company without reference to his other board members, etc., without a comp competitive arrangement, etc. 
and he volunteered to, to remove himself from office because of that, because we have standards in the FNM. There are no standards in the PLP. You can't get the Prime Minister to comment on it. He won't give you a word on it. He'd duck you. You'd get angry, you know? All of them, not all of them, but many of them have contracts down as Sarkis as million. Um, if I'm begging you, say, listen, man, give this contract to my friend over here, give this contract to my son, give this contract to my brother, etc., then I can't stand up when it's time to stand up to you. If I, if I get the Chinese down the British, British Colonial Hotel, and everybody got, I got, I got this, I need this, I need that shop, and I need Jack to get this, and Harry to get that, well, Harry can stand up in the Bahamas. That's why I was able to, in office and out of office, speak my mind to anyone. I didn't beg, didn't want. One time I said, you know, I have nothing, want nothing, could care less, came from nothing. And I, they tore me up. They said, oh, Ingram has said the wrong thing, etc." Yeah, I may have said the wrong way, but I meant what I said. And that's very important in politics. Right, so, um, so uh, this is a good place for us to take uh, our next break. We're going to have a quick pause here. We are discussing the state of political affairs in the Bahamas with <coughs> Right Honorable Hubert Ingram. We will be back with more on the record right after this. One hundred and seventy-five candidates vie for thirty-nine seats in the May 10th general elections. More than one hundred and eighty-one thousand registered voters are expected at the polls that day. Who will form the next government of the Bahamas? To find out, join me, Jerome Sawyer, along with a team of seasoned anchors and reporters, analysts and experts, as we bring you live coverage of Our Choice 2017. Coverage begins election night at 6 p.m. on RTV Cable Channel 212. Uh, what are you doing? Calling the bank to order more checks. Go to epbahamas.com and order your checks from Executive Printers. Executive Printers. We're the authority in business and personal check printing in the Bahamas. Come in and see one of our specialists or visit us online at epbahamas.com to design and order your checks today. I'm a man of fine regardings. I moved there in 1982, and I've been there all my life. Your pain is my pain. My passion is your passion. I've walked through those waters. I know about the concrete ceilings falling down. When crime affects you, it affects me. When the hurricane affects you, it affects me. We're gonna provide opportunities and jobs for carpenters, for electricians, for plumbers. We have many talented people in this community, and we are going to do all in our power to let you see the talent that is in Pinewood Gardens. Welcome back to On the Record. Tonight's guest is former Prime Minister, the Right Honorable Hubert Ingram. Mr. Ingram, as we went into our break, we started discussing this whole Bahama issue, but relative to, 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 to the behavior of, of ministers relative to that. But Bahama has so many different levels. There is a, obviously the action that led to the, the, delay, in the, op the delay in the opening, um, the court action, um, the now reopening issue on contracts, etc. Um, this has really become a, a debacle um, for the country. Yes, and I blame the PLP government. I blame them because we did a deal with the Chinese and uh, Sarkis is million. That they were to finish this hotel by the end of 2014, early 2015. We gave them lots of concessions. We did that because they were going to produce for us 5,500 direct jobs for Bahamians. There were going to be 2,400 Bahamians working during the construction site. The Bahamian companies would get $400 million worth of contracts, etc. And uh, when that didn't happen, the government made the wrong decisions. The government should never have put Bahama in liquidation. The government should have insisted upon the Chinese authorities and the Sarkis's million honoring their deal. 
As a result of Obama going into liquidation, um, the country has lost substantial revenue. And of course, the downgrades you have, we are now downgraded by international rating agencies, are attributable in large measure to the fact that Obama didn't come together with the government's excessive expenditure. Um, secondly, um, the persons who were involved in negotiating with the Chinese authorities, Alison Maynard and, uh, and uh, Jerome Fitzgerald, were conflicted. They were conflicted to the extent that they had their own interests to protect and to defend and promote. And I therefore I can't have confidence in you in making a deal on my behalf as a Bahamian if I know you are also in the position to make deals for yourself. When you're working for me, I want you to work for me exclusively. There's no means by which Alison Maynard could have gotten four shops in Burma if she was not the Attorney General and Minister in the government. Otherwise, Jerome Sawyer could have gotten a shop. Tom Jones could have gotten one, etc. They got it because of connection, because of her position. Jerome could not become the exclusive tour operator and the rest of the things he wanted, etc. If his name was just Jerome Sawyer, off the streets of Nassau, because of their position. And they were the wrong people to be involved in negotiations on our behalf. Thirdly, the contractor who failed to finish the job, who messed up, is the contractor that the government gone in bed with. Gone in bed with them, hugged them, um, allowed them to buy the British Colonial, did a deal with them and said that while Burma is under construction, we're allowing you to move some of your equipment from Burma, to go down to your, own, your other hotel, to move some of your employees down to the other hotel, and still expect you to finish the job on time. Finally, you know, from day one, they never honored the deal. They said they needed 8,000 Chinese. We didn't like it. We went to the House of Assembly. Um, and we said that, fine, this is the only way we can get the deal. And as soon as we did the deal, shortly thereafter, they said I needed 4,000. They deceived us. And so I hold Mr. Christie responsible, and I told him this, he knows this, um, for not standing up for the Bahamas, standing up for us, and looking the Chinese in the eye and telling them, listen, this is the deal. So don't come with no additional concessions, because when I give you concessions, and you fail to meet the requirements of the deal, I have to discuss with you what I can take back from you. I can't be discussing with you what more I can give you, because you didn't honor the deal. The heads of agreement made public um, just a few days ago um, with, with new concessions. I haven't seen it. I, okay. I, I've done this just before, yeah. OK, all right. Um, in what, let, let's move past Balmore, because it be quite a bit of uh, <laughs> other topics. So, um, the situation with the introduction and collection of value-added tax yes. um, and where this money seemingly has gone, government says it went into a consolidated fund. Yes, 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 yes. Um, the government just increased expenditure, you know. I bought this for you. I bought this chart for you um, to show you that, you know, they, they collected, um, here you are, um, that's the central bank chart. Um, and that shows you that they collected um, 536 million and 612 million in 15 and 16, 2015, 2016 in value added tax, and show you what they end up the deficit being. They've been spending the money because they've been squandering their money. That's the reality. And so there's no such thing as, as um, VAT going any particular place. Mr. Christie told us that because of VAT, he hired. Um, I think 200 more policemen, 190 or they're about policemen. Well, the FNM, without that, hired more policemen than that. Um, without that, the FNM hired more Defense Force officers than that, etc. Um, 
There needs to be an investigation as to where the money gone. You'll be surprised in the way the money gone. You have um, made some very strong allegations too against the Ministry of Finance and some missing funds um, in your uh, appearances mm -hmm. on the on the rally stage, um, and that that has been challenged. Of course, why why would it be challenged? You ever heard anybody who went to court who says he's guilty? <laughs> Everybody go to court. No matter how many victims there are. I am curious. No matter how many victims there are, you always say, not me, I ain't do it. Where would, where would this information, uh, where would this money seemingly have gone? Who, who should be held responsible at the end of the day? Vote for them next week. You'll find out. Interesting. You're so never going to find out while the PLB is in office. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we are on the verge of another possible financial blacklisting. Tourism sluggish, unemployment is an issue. Um, what are going to be some of the big challenges facing the next government, whether it is a return to PLP or whether it's a new FNM government? The big challenge for the Bahamas is to find the means by which we can produce jobs and grow the economy. Mm -hmm. That's the big challenge. Um, Bama is a critical part of that. Um, when we got kicked out of office, we thought that Bama was a good inheritance for, for the next government of the Bahamas. Um, and so I am not one of those who criticize them for giving additional concessions to Bama. They need to do what they need to do to get Bama operational, because without Bama, there's no immediate thing in sight that will produce substantial numbers of jobs quickly. And so political parties, FNM and PLP, need to focus on how they're going to produce jobs in the economy. Now, this election has been the one where there's been very little talk about what they're going to do. There's been lots of talk about who did what and who did the other, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's not my job to propose what they should do or shouldn't do, um, other than to say that I think that they need to focus upon the economy. This potential um, blacklisting again, which could again continue to erode the financial services industry. I don't know about the potential blacklisting, but the reality is that on the on the banking side, um, on the side of, of the Bahamas being an offshore center, providing privacy for persons to bank their money. Those days are fast disappearing from us. The financial services where we can be very successful, and uh, some people are in those areas, and they can produce good jobs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But the banking side, the big companies, the big countries, mm -hmm. would like to have their taxes, and they believe that we are hiding their taxes, and they're going to squeeze us and squeeze us. This has been going on now for nearly ten years, and and uh, they're not going to stop until they squeeze every ounce out of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we are at um, a critical point in our show. We've got a few more areas to discuss. Um, we also want to remind everyone that um, we will be on the air election night here on channel 212 beginning at 6 p.m. So be sure and stay tuned as we bring you all of the results from election night. But stay with us. We are back on the record right after this quick break. so many promises we in the PLP we have big plans to fight crime and we've suffered through all their broken promises big plans to reinvent education and training and five years of their big empty plans. rhetoric big plans to expand the Bahamian economy the PLP has ruined our economy by serving themselves at our expense can Bahamians really afford five more years of Perry Christie's big plans, big plans. Big plans. For news that's happening in our country, the best place to turn is our news. Good evening, Bahamas. Coming up tonight. The biggest on stories on the best station. Opening news tonight. The government collected almost. The Education Minister. The Bahama Claims Committee explains how unsecured. Giving you all sides of the equation to keep you informed. 
Well, in other news, police are cracking and down on the claims of Bahamar's creditors and former Police are on the scene here at a popular hangout. Statement hangar. yesterday, Catholic Archbishop. Watch our news weeknights, 7.30 and weekends at 7 p.m. only on RTV. I went along with the let's go into politics because I wanted to have a position of influence where that city dump is concerned. The reality is both parties, the PLP and the FNM, had an opportunity to fix it. $25 million from the IDB, along with $10 million that was given from the public purse to fix the dump. To date, we don't know where that money has gone, and nothing is done or said about it. We are back with more on the record. Our guest tonight is the Right Honorable Hubert Ingram, who has been Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas three times in his political career. Mr. Ingram, Dr. Minnis has come under a lot of criticism for his leadership style, his readiness as, as, as leader. Is he poised and could he take the reins of, uh, of leadership if given the opportunity? Is he ready for it? Uh, yes, but he's not by himself, you know. Mm -hmm. He has a very good team. Um, um, if the election were held tomorrow, um, as it will be next week, he will be able to form a cabinet of uh, some very good people. And so people think a prime minister is a president, but he's not. It's a collective view of all that, that, that makes it all up. And so um, notwithstanding what has been said, um, whether it's Dwayne Sands and Brent up here in the East, or whether it is Marvin Dames and Jeff Lloyd down in the center and the south, um, he has a good team. But he's had some challenges. I mean, he's he, he he ousted in the House of he's, Assembly. He's had some challenges, and he has survived. That says a lot about him. Mm -hmm. That says a lot about him. You know, Mr. Christie has a group with him, most of whom never voted for him to be leader. Most of him never supported him in becoming leader of the party. Now, in Minna's case, his home was very public. Christie's was not. PLP was better, or is better, at keeping his business secret inside than the FNM is. But did that not hurt the FNM? I mean, it was oh, yeah. No, yeah. it cost, the, yes, 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 it did cost the FNM. But the public has determined, notwithstanding that, our desire to be rid of the PLP exceeds our concern about that. And let's stay focused. Get rid of them first, elect the FNM, and we'll go from there. Do you think that is the, uh, a fair message given that people have been asking, well, you know, you, you want us to kick these guys out, but what do you want to do? Should you well, not come to the public and say, this is what we intend to do? Should oh, no, 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 no. The, yeah. the reality is that, you know, um, the only person who has been every night, there's a rally, telling the public what he's going to do is minutes, you know. Now, whether you're paying attention to it is a different matter. But Menace is very focused on saying every rally what he's going to do if he wins the election. And I suppose that one of the reasons why he would have brought me in is that I can attack and I can talk about other things, etc., while he can be focused on saying if we win the election, this is what we're going to do. Read his speeches. Do you think that he is still, in many ways, living in your shadow as leader? So it's Christy. What's the problem? Don't so. <laughs> Christy's leader of the PLP. Yeah, you lead the FNM. You're talking about the shadow. Yeah, the shadow. I mean, the shadow, the shadow, the shadow. You're the shadow as, as leader of the FNM. No, I am. Um, no, I don't think so. I don't mm. think so. Um, is Christy living in the shadow of Pinland? He'll have to answer that. I guess in that case, depends on who you ask. No, there will always be, there will always be comparisons made between leaders, etc. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons why I, I stayed um, in the background, etc. Um, no per two persons are alike. Menace is a very successful man, business-wise far more successful than me or Christie could ever dream of ever been. Um, he succeeded in being a successful businessman. 
He's very focused. He's very determined. He's very strong. When Christy said Menace was weak the other day, I think that, that was, he misspoke. Had to be misspoken. Menace is 10 times as strong as Christy is. Um, because to take what Menace has taken, he's been beaten up by the newspapers, the talk shows, by his colleagues and by others, day after day, day after day, for the last three, four years. And he has stood tall, said focus. He wants to become Prime Minister of the Bahamas. He has put together a good team. Um, many persons didn't expect him to be able to attract. Um, many of the candidates he has attracted to his ranks, but he was able to do so. And he is now ready to become Prime Minister next week. You seem very confident that the FNM could win the, the, the upcoming elections. Oh, the you, public tells me that every day. You, you admit, though, that you were surprised in the last election that, that, that the FNM lost. Yeah, and I also admit I won three elections, so, you yeah. know. But how, how do you get, <laughs> I don't know you on track, sir. I mean, how do you know? I, there's, you, no, there's, no, there's no certainty with anything. Uh, ex okay. uh, there's no certainty with anything. Right. I mean, I may, I may or may not get out of this chair. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm planning to go to my office and I leave here. Okay. All right. So the indicator. Okay. So there's some indicators out there. I'm just curious from a political yeah, yeah. standpoint, though. How do you? How no, do you really I think. Gauge I, I, what is I, I, I think there? that we have we have um, reasonable polls, mm -hmm. and I think that um, we are able to to feel the mood of the people, and the mood of the people this time has changed. This is the change election. Um, um, sometimes it is not a change election. Uh, sometimes the election is vexed. I'm going to vote for this one, etc. The last election they were vexed. They gave votes to the DNA um, um, that would normally have gone to the to the F and M. This time, I think they want to be rid of the PLP. Um, last time they want to be rid of me. Um, this time they want to be rid of Christie. And uh, they know that well, we got rid of Ingram. I voted with the DNA. To get rid of Christie, we got to vote for the F and M. Interesting. You, your your last well, 1997 was really the only la, the last time that a government, a, a incumbent government, was returned to office. Um, what would have done it for you then? What what was different that time around and made you you were able to hold on to to, to power? Everything is a season. Um, you know, when I got elected in 92, I was a new face, 97, fine. Um, I said I didn't want more than two terms. Um, we'll never know whether I would have won the election in 2002. You think that was I, a mistake for you I to step down and, and move away? No, 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 no. That was my deal. I, that's what I wanted. Mm. I, I, I gave my service. I didn't want to come back either. Um, I, was, I was persuaded, cajoled. But people were saying you were trying to come back this time around, too. Yeah, I, or everything is what people say about England. Um, okay, I, I'm probably the most, the most talked about politicians and thing. No, I had no interest or desire in coming back this time. Um, the last time I came back, I came back because I felt I owed the party a, a debt, and they wanted me to come back. Um, of course not. Why would I want to come back? Um, I've done everything. I've been Prime Minister three times. Um, I'm going to be 70 years of age in August of this year. Um, um, I have no more mountains to climb. I don't. I've climbed them all. What do you see, though, sir, as the, the, the future of the Bahamas? I mean, this is a pivotal time for us. The millennials make up the seemingly the largest voting bloc, first-time voters, young people who are involved in the process. We have candidates in their 20s. New faces across the board. The F and M has candidates in the twenties. Not we have candidates. Me, we the PL, meaning the country. The PLP got the seventy odds. Yeah, we, old, we meaning the country. We got the old sir. ones. Not not so much old ones who hang on for their, their life. Who won't go nowhere. Okay, sir. Again, Ministers here. put together a relatively balanced team with, with with some young people and not so young people, and that's good. Do you think those those young voters though are really going to drive? or are driving a change in the political process, whether it be a change in government or a change in, in, in how we do things? I hope so. I hope mm -hmm. so. I mean, they, they know what they got. Mm -hmm. They know what they got now. And uh, um, they have nothing to lose by changing. They have much to gain. Much to gain. Yesterday, we witnessed the advance poll and the seeming 
the amount of chaos that ensued because of that. I, I want to get your views on what possibly went wrong. Why are we in, well, in such a, well, you a, know, a it's, it's, horrible it's, position? It's very simple, you know. It's very simple. When I won the election in 92, it was a very organized election, no chaos. When the election was held in 97, there was no chaos. Election held in 2002, no chaos. Election in 2007, quite a bit of chaos. Election now, election in 2012, no chaos. Election now, chaos. What's the common denominator? Christie and the PLP are in office. You think that as this is intentional? As opposed to ourselves. Um, the chaos yesterday, um, partly, it was partly a coordinated chaos because the, it is unthinkable that a register of voters of those persons who are eligible to vote, policemen, defense force officers, um, persons who are applying because they're going to be away for medical reasons or what have you, um, candidates and their spouses, a limited number of people um, that you couldn't have and you had to apply by a certain date mm -hmm. so you can make up the register that up to Tuesday um, the register was not available, um, certified because they were busy down there stuffing on the names of additional people, many of whom should not have been on that register yesterday. They, have, they had total chaos in many of the offices overseas, whether it's Atlanta, I'm not sure they voted in Barbados at all yesterday, or China, or wherever it was, etc. It was orchestrated. And you also saw on television we had the Attorney General, Alison Maynard, was coming out of the, the Parliamentary Registrar's office. Brave Davis, the, commission, the, the Deputy PM, he was coming out of the office. And the other reporters, who were trying to talk to the Parliamentary Commissioner, were escorted downstairs by the police. Police said, come, I am told that you got to move. Carry them downstairs, carry them out. Mr. Hall, the Parliamentary Commissioner, his term of office expires today. Today, he was on contract. He's already retired from the, public, from the public service because they reach mandatory retirement age. They gave him a contract expiring today. I'm skeptical. I'm concerned. I hope Mr. Christie understands that he won an election in the Bahamas that was organized. I was the prime minister. It's my job and it's his job to be the guardian of our democracy, to make sure that the door I came through is available for anyone to come through. And that we put in place all the mechanism and the means by which that happens. And you start with a base, a clean voters register. That everybody has an opportunity who's qualified in the country to vote in an organized fashion. And that chaos yesterday, I charged the government the responsibility for it, even though I know that also the Parliament Commissioner, because there was lack of competence, played a part. Do you foresee that having some effects on the outcome? Um, I expect confidently that the election is going to be held in an organized fashion next week. If it isn't, there's going to be trouble, because the population want this government to go. And no shenanigans, no hanky-panky, no fooling around. It's going to stop that. And I don't understand why, if I'm in office, I can't be satisfied if the population decide I no longer want Hubert Ingram, as they did, that I don't put any roadblocks in their way. My job is to facilitate them exercising their rights. That's how I got here. And that same, that same door I came through is a door I leave through. And I should not be fearful of living in a society after I've been in office. I said over and over, don't do nothing while you're in office. Have no policy, no law that you can't live under or with when you are not in office. 
And people who are scared to be out of office are dangerous people to be in office in the first place. But you've got to be strong to get rid of them, get them out. Because they want to stay and stay. There's a reason why they want to stay. Mr. Ingram, with that, we come to the end of our show. Um, thank you very much. I want to, first of all, thank you for agreeing to come and sit with us tonight. Um, I think our discussion has been wide ranging and certainly gave uh, our audience a view into the state of the political affairs in the country. Um, all the best uh, to you, sir, and your continued retirement. Thank you. Very and much. we thank yeah. you. And hopefully, at some point, we'll get you back uh, on the ship. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you very, very much. much. Okay. Yeah. Folks, we hope that you have enjoyed our show tonight. Special thanks to the Right Honorable Hubert Ingram, my guest, my producer, technical staff, and of course, you, the audience, for watching. Be sure to join us here on our TV election night starting at 6 p.m. We will have a full team. Our coverage will be wide ranging as well as we cover everything relative to the elections and the results that night. Also, we'll be back on the air May 11th on our regularly scheduled broadcast to take a look at the results of May 10th. Once again, I'm your host, Jerome Sawyer. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.